Oh, uh, <clears throat> hi everyone, and welcome back to Brian Reads Comics. I'm your host, Brian Hines, and I'm going to give you the four keys to success. One, like this video. Two, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Three, click the bell for notifications. And four, check out my Patreon page where you can support this show. What? I didn't say there are the keys to your success or the keys to my success. It's my show. Anyway, today we've got some quick reviews for the month of July 2023. I know, I know, it's a little late, again, but I had to go to Houston for my nephew's first birthday party. Heck of a kid. Already very smart. Easily my intellectual equal. So for the first review, we're going to check out Void Rivals number two. What? You haven't read Void Rivals number one? Well, that's no problem! I just reviewed it on my other show, Comic Book Issues, where I do in-depth reviews and analysis of modern comics. So go stop this video and watch my review of Void Rivals number one. It's only about nine minutes. Then come back here and watch this quickie review of Void Rivals number two. I'll wait. Oh, they can just pause? Oh, uh, good, good, great. <clears throat> Void Rivals number two. The story of the stranded pilots, Derek and Solila, continues. In a flashback, we see that Derek was launching to find a comet and build up the Agorian's water reserves on their half of the Sacred Ring, a halo planet built around a black hole. Half held by the Agorians, half held by the Zertonians. He's told to either succeed or not come back by his politician dad. While in a medically induced coma to reach the comet, Derek has a vision of the Sacred Ring being built, that the two races must become one or perish. Having explained this, so Lila believes he heard the voice of Zerta, one of their gods. Their two races have been at war for millennia. That only ends if they get off this rock and spread the truth that the two races are actually one. It takes about 20 days to rebuild their shuttle. So Lila's still rejecting Derek's friendship. Her people are almost out of water. That comic was their salvation. She failed, and now she's coming home with an Agorian. She'll be branded a traitor. They get up in the shuttle. The android thinks they should get to the ring in, oh, about 12 years. But before they can worry about that, an asteroid begins to follow them. Mechanical claws descend from the rock and pull them in. They exit to find a ship merged with the rock so it acts as camouflage. And the pilot is... Pudgy Pig! Oh, no, wait, it's a Scutzoid. A lizard alien race once seen in the Transformers cartoon. And that's issue two. There's not too much to say about the creative team here that I didn't already cover in the review of issue number one, so let's stick to the plot. Whereas the first issue is mostly character building and the surprise appearance of Jetfire, this issue gives us a backstory of the Sacred Ring and the vision that Derek alluded to in the previous issue. But it also keeps world building and plot building. It sets up for future issues. Why does Derek's father seem to resent him? What does the Skuxoid want with the Ringers? Ringites? Mm. And it seems like Salila is still holding back. Is it just her duty to her people or is there something more there? This book continues to grow the energy on the universe and I'm loving Kirkman's take on 80s sci-fi action. I'm definitely going to keep reading. Next up, it's Tales of the Titans number one. With the Titans relaunching as the new world-protecting organization in the absence of the Justice League, DC has also relaunched Tales of the Titans. Back in the day, it was a miniseries giving us backstory on the newly created characters for Wolfen and Perez's new Teen Titans. Well, same idea. A miniseries that takes an issue to explore the solo adventures of one of the Titans. This first issue exploring Starfire, Princess Coriander, is written by Shannon and Dean Hale, with art by Javier Rodriguez. While hanging out of the tower, Cory bristles against how she's always perceived by her friends. She's the emotional one. She's the alien. She's the princess. When the team gets dispatched to investigate a mystery, she's sent to investigate an alien ship from her home planet that has landed on Earth. She encounters two Tamarinian sisters seeking the help of their princess. One lighthearted, the other serious. Curry can't help but see parallels with her relationship with her sister, Blackfire. They head to a Tamarinian colony planet where tentacles are bursting out of the ground to snatch their livestock. As she spends time with the Tamaranians, she sees that first appearances aren't always as they seem, and her being heavily emotional is not a bad thing, as it motivates her to protect the ones she loves. She then defeats the tentacles, returns home to save the Titans from Queen Bee, and has a flying talk with Donna Troy about her feelings, then it's back to the tower for a good old-fashioned food fight. Okay, this issue might be the single best exploration of Starfire that I've read in a long time, and given some of the crap I've read about her, <coughs> Red Hood and the Outlaws, <coughs> that's saying something. She's given a low-stake adventures to get her away from the team so that the story isn't all about her relationship with the Titans. She's angry that people they see her as a princess. She's upset that everyone calls her over-emotional. She's then given the time and space to dissect those feelings and come to terms with them. Princess can mean hero. Her emotions give her strength. Coriander is a woman who has been tried and tested and come out better than ever. The Hales do a great job on this book's writing. Also, the art by Javier Rodriguez is amazing. He draws it in a sort of flat but simplified style in almost animated fashion, but it's still full of details, action, facial expressions. Even the three or four Tamaranians we spend time with look different instead of relying on their 
alienness to explain away why they all look alike. And Rodriguez also does the colors, which synergize nicely with the line art. It really is a fantastic issue, both in the art and the writing sense. But since the creative teams rotate with each issue, I can't really promise that the book will remain consistently good. But this is one of the single best issues DC has put out in a long time, and really gets to the core of the misunderstood Starfire. And up last, it's The Excellence, number five. This issue wraps up the second Excellence miniseries, which was a continuation of the first Excellence miniseries, which itself was a sequel to The Ecstatics, which followed up on The X-Force relaunch, all written by Peter Milligan, with art by Mike and Laura Allred. Confused? In 2001, X-Force was relaunched as an entirely new mutant team living to capture fame and celebrity. Ecstatics, as well as the X-Force issues, lasted some 26 issues and was a critical hit, if not a financial one. The creators recently reunited for the giant-sized Ecstatics book, which then spun off into the Excellent miniseries. Actually, Excellent was split into two five-issue miniseries, so while I'm reviewing issue five, it's technically issue ten of the overall story arc. Confused? Essentially, Zeitgeist, the leader of X-Horse who was killed in the very first issue of that reboot, is alive, and now he wants to become an immortal god. He surrounded himself with a team of fame-hungry mutants called the Excellent. Mirror Girl, Toodle Pip, the evil dupe known only as Pood, a sentient robot named Dox. They steal a spell from Doctor Strange that will make Zeitgeist all-powerful the more popular he is. Thus, they wage war on the revived ecstatics to steal their social media presence and make the celebrity mutants feared and hated, or even worse, irrelevant. Confused? The ecstatics, led by Mr. Sensitive and with his surviving teammates, as well as the namesake children of his dead teammates, You Go Girl the Anarchist, Keep trying to fight off Zeitgeist's popularity, but for 10 issues do a pretty piss-poor job of it, spending more time fighting amongst themselves. So in issue 5, again, 10, Zeitgeist, having survived numerous coup attempts by his own team and having killed several of the Excellent and Ecstatics himself, achieves his popularity boost and becomes a god. The Ecstatics show up for a final showdown with their former leader. It's a brutal battle that just ends when Chekhov's gun goes off. A character who till now has been inconsequential makes their move to save the day. A bit anticlimactic? Yeah. The Ecstatic series itself has always been more about an examination of the idea of celebrity in a superhuman world, with the excellent updating the idea for superhero celebrity in the era of social media. Hey, it's actually a fascinating read. All the characters, both old and new, are completely unique, with their own flaws and goals. A good example is Mirror Girl, Zeitgeist's girlfriend, who can't quite stand up to him or let others betray him, despite his constant bullying of her and his toxic behavior. You Go Girl and the Anarchist are trying to have a relationship, but can't figure out if they really have feelings for each other, or if they just enjoy to find Mr. Sensitive and basking in the social media frenzy. And what can you say about Mike Allred's art? There really is no one else like him. He loves drawing full bodies and ultraviolence, but in a flat, one-dimensional style. So if you don't mind a bit of preaching and lessons-to-be-learned messages in your superior satire, then you can really enjoy Excellent. You don't even need to be that familiar with the Ecstatics, but I would recommend starting with the Ecstatic Special, and then reading this 10-issue miniseries. But I can admit this is not going to appeal to everyone. It appeals to a specific type of reader. There's a lot of unlikable characters here and very confusing plots. But overall, I think the smart reader will get it. Not that you're not smart if you don't read it. <clears throat> Please like me. Thank you for joining me in my somewhat pathetic ramblings. I'll see you back here next month for quick reviews of August 2023. Until then, this is Brian Reads Comics, and I'm your host, Brian Hines.